into the world of computer modeling at UCL's world-leading computer science department, and the future is already here. But for our reporter, Sarah Lockett, to see how different techniques are being used to model the world, she had to begin in ancient Egypt. So this is an augmented reality application. In the Petri Museum of University College London, Dr. Anna Yavanik and I try out the virtual makeup styles of the ancient Egyptian pharaoh Akhenaten and his queen Nefertiti. This kind of augmented reality has many different applications in museums, in retail and also in entertainment, but it's very difficult to do in real time. There's a lot of technology that goes into it. This piece of 2D modelling was created with the English National Opera and digital agency Holition, who developed the technology. UCL refined how people would use it most effectively. The idea behind this is for us to understand how to now frame this kind of technology, um, what kind of interface for it to develop, how the user experience with it would function best. It's an immense field that is just starting to really come out, it's starting to develop and that's why it's so exciting to be there at this moment and see how the technology is going to develop, uh, how people are going to use it. What we're looking at now is some, some new software that we're working on that we've developed recently. 3D computer vision expert Lourdes Agapito shows me how she's making 3D moving models from ordinary 2D video footage. In the film industry, this is usually done with motion capture technology, markers and multiple cameras. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to make this a lot more lightweight by taking away the need for all these cameras and for all these markers that the actors actually really hate. So we have a 2D video and we want to lift that into 3D. And of course the problem here is that when we've projected the world onto a 2D image, we've lost a lot of information. So recovering all this information mathematically, it's a very hard problem. Most of it really is designing mathematical algorithms and tools that will allow us to recover the third dimension from just two dimensions. This device, in the prototype stage, is being trialled among people with chronic pain to help them remain physically active. It works with the gyro sensor in a smartphone. By transforming the movement into sound, we try to shift the attention away from pain back to your body so that you are more aware of the fact that your body is indeed moving, can move, and you are able to do. The body is working. So we are trying to work both on a level of awareness to build confidence in the ability. What we have here are a critical mass of researchers in different areas that can work together in an interdisciplinary way and this is really important um, and that's why it's quite difficult and there are so few centres that are able to do this research. As software can get more complex and we can add more functionality, it can be quite hard to think about what's the best way to present that information at the interface. It's understanding how people do problem solving, how they do decision making, how they use their memory, and that perhaps is the hard bit. So, so this is something I f printed a few years back uh, when 3D uh, printers started to be very popular to sort of demonstrate that it's not enough just to acquire shapes, but we want to also acquire the function of shapes. For example, in this case, if the cogs don't engage, then they will just not rotate or move, right? So in our group, the type of work we do is not just capture the 3D objects, but also how they interact with each other. At UCL, all these examples of cutting-edge computer modelling are essential to computers becoming more intelligent and being able to recognise, learn from and operate in the real world around them.